Welcome to Implausible Nature, your home for all things Black Templar. Uh, on today's video, we have another list for you, but this time it's a little different. Uh, today, uh, as of right now, we are recording this video on Friday night, uh, April 22nd. Uh, this list that we're going to talk about is Bob's tournament list that he is playing in a tournament tomorrow, Saturday the 23rd, which uh, by the time you guys are watching this video, it is probably already Saturday the yep. 23rd. Uh, so um, we are going to talk about his list, and then hopefully uh, we are going to have some live streams this weekend uh, with Bob or Bob and I uh, talking about the tournament. Um Hopefully, Bob will have a little bit of time in between each game, maybe, where he can do a quick live stream, talk about that. Um, if not, um, we'll have a live stream at the end of the day. Um, it's going to be late in the evening for our uh, European folks. Sorry about that. That's just the way the tournament, because we're in the U.S., uh, when the tournament ends is, you know, we'll definitely, Bob will do a live stream to talk about the, that day's events. We're going to do another live stream on Sunday night. Um, to talk about uh, the whole tournament and Sunday's games as well. Um, just to kind of, you know, do a whole weekend full of content for you guys um, so we can follow along with Bob's progress and uh, see uh, all the, the hopefully great wins that he's going to have. It don't so, me. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Knock on something wood shaped. Right. Um, so uh, but for this video, we're going to talk about the list that you're bringing. So without further ado, Bob, uh, let's dive in. T tell us about this list that you're running. All right. So I will preface this by saying that the list is applicable or the tournament is applicable to AOC and all the data slates with that. However, I could not make changes to my list with four days notice and get things built and painted. So this was the list that was already kind of locked in for me. Prior you mean you to couldn't build four in four days? You couldn't build and paint 10 Primaris Sword Brethren? No, I could not. Come on. I could Come not. Come on. Let's be honest here. <laughs> Manning the Fort miniatures. So... Uh, did me a solid <laughs> and built and painted a bunch of my stuff that I'm going to be actually be using tomorrow. So props awesome. out to him. Uh, yep. One of our yeah, patrons and he also has a, yep. And he's also channel. one of our moderators. We love him. So, uh, so definitely he, go check out his channel as well. He hooked me up. So, but with that being said, uh, it is a GT, um, Looking to be about 40 players right now. So it's a little bit smaller GT uh, in the area. Uh, unfortunately, it looked like there was 15 to 20 drops. So the tournament was going to be significantly larger. But even still, I can deal with 40 players. That's pretty good. Um, I checked it this morning. I'm not sure if there's any more drops on it. But it'll for sure be a GT. Um, but <clears throat> it should be a pretty fun day uh, tomorrow and the next day. Five total games. So three games tomorrow, two games on Sunday. Uh, but I'll be quite frank. It's uh, been my first tournament in almost nine months. So I got to break off some rust. Hopefully I'm able to to do that in the, and get some wins. Um, but we'll see. So I'll go through the list a little bit. Uh, like I mentioned, I couldn't do any changes to it as far as AOC goes. So when you see the list here in the video, you're going to kind of see some storm shields and that's, not something that we always need to kind of like lean into now with AOC. And we kind of talked about that a little bit in the last video. Uh, we are also going to be doing a video here shortly talking about the vows and the different choices on that. And this will be kind of my first run around with the different uh, vows, honestly, because I don't necessarily feel like I need uphold to be isn't the default. Yeah. So how does that set up my list? So, I am running an MSU style list. Um, I felt that MSU allows me to engage in the, the objectives a little bit better. Um, there is a lot of success out there with uh, the larger blocks of, of troops. But again, I 
can't build and paint things in four days. So I probably would have gone with 10 man primary squads or maybe the assault intercessor squads, uh, depending. Um, but there just wasn't any time. So in my list, I have two HQs. So what you'll kind of see in my, my list here is I am trying to do everything that I can to minimize the secondaries that I can give away. So in this particular case, I run two HQs and only two characters. So that means I do not give Assassinate up. So I could take Grimaldus, but as you'll see in my list, he doesn't have any good targets for him to follow around. And, and, and because of that, I don't want to, him to be a liability on the board. Yes, it's great, all the things that he does, but I felt like a standard chaplain on the bike, uh, I T-bones him. He's got Iron Resolve, Litany of Hate. He's Master of Sanctity, and I'm going with Psalm of Remorseless Persecution on him. I also got Helbrecht. Helbrecht is going to be escorting uh, a few different things, where I'll get to in just a few minutes here. All right, so Alex is going to ask a question in just a few moments, and you'll see why. But I am bringing one squad of five Helix Gauntlet Infiltrators and two five-man Incursor squads. So the reason why I took them is because they're awesome, right? Or not really. <laughs> uh, I distinctly recall you telling me on Messenger that Incursors are terrible. Why are we running Incursors if they're terrible? So, let's get th one thing straight. Incursors are terrible. They're, they're very bad. They're not very good. But they do do one thing that is necessary for the list to be successful in MSU. For me. So, and it's especially in more so in the AOC world, right? So they have concealed positions at 105 points. Very good rule. So they're not going to kill anything. They are not going to stick around very long, probably. But what they will do is I can get onto an objective, turn one, that is well outside of my deployment zone, and potentially max points on turn one, which is next to impossible for most lists to do. Because I can get the incursors on my closest two objectives, potentially even three with the infiltrators, depending on the mission. So I can get them in cover, auto line of sight. Yeah, there is still line of sight out, uh, firing uh, weapons out there, indirect fire, but it's a lot worse now. It's a lot worse. Oh, it's, it's bad. It's bad. And... And cursors have smoke uh, grenades. Yep. Or smoke screen is the keyword. So, you know, if they are going to fire indirect at you, they worsen their ballista skill, and you can pop that and make them minus essentially one. minus two to yep. hit um, overall, which uh, is really going to hamper any any shooting that uh, comes your way that's indirect. Yep. So in most of my games, I, I suspect the way my list is built is I'm going to be running Stranglehold and uh, Oath of Moments, typically. And then I will, my third objective or secondary is going to be opponent dependent. And then maybe I'll do uh, banners, depending on if there's anything good for that secondary for my opponent. So I feel like the, the incursors are a necessary piece to make the list work to get that advanced deployment, start getting the points while the rest of my list advances. Now, if it was crusader squads or assault intercessors, which is something that, you know, typically are taken, maybe even the first burn crusaders, they have to walk another turn and they're not going to get up to that objective until turn two. And then you're not going to be scoring until turn three which puts me behind on the points right away. And you really lose a lot of margin of error on that by getting up there right away. Even if they die on cert two, at least I know that I'm getting points on that first turn for the second turn. Most of the time, you know, obviously there's, you know, they could potentially die, but hopefully I can get some cover and get them on a line of sight there. But, uh, 
most of the time I should be able to get some points on that first turn, start earning, and then I give myself a little bit of cushion so that if there's errors in the game or if like they're especially dangerous or they get killed, I'll have the rest of my list being able to advance forward and they can pick up the slack at that point. So yeah. that's the thought behind it. We'll see if it works. Uh, I know it, it works in general because we see a lot of top players using your cursors right now. Uh, but I feel like I don't even need, necessarily need to be in a pulled for them to be be good because now we have armor of contempt, which will protect yep. them even more. And that makes the infiltrators even more durable. It's just crazy. Yeah, they're, they're silly. It's though. just, it's dumb. The infiltrators are, yep. will be a great addition. If, if I can get to them without uh, being dumb, I'm going to get those infiltrators on that center uh, and start earning my oath moments too. So that'll be a good thing. All right, so that's the troops. So how about those elites? Yeah, yeah. So we're going to do, I typically build lists with something in mind. I like to do two to three close combat units. That's, is it necessarily optimal? Maybe not. Uh, but that's just, you know, everyone, Black Templar players want to get into close combat. So I kind of do that with my list building in mind. Uh, um, it's, do I hamstring myself? Maybe, maybe not. But I have two five-man blade guard veteran squads, two redemptors, and a 10-man uh, lightning claw and storm shield uh, vanguard veteran squad. So I got three legitimate close combat units. Now, a lot of people are going to ask, well, you do not have apothecaries. No, I don't. So yes, it's a risk, but there's still five-man blade guard veteran squads. So they're going to be pretty tough to kill. You know, you have the three wounds on each of them. They still have Storm Shield, so they're still going to have the, the two plus save, the four plus invulnerable. You know, I don't have to worry about Crusher Stampede anymore because that's gone. So no more minus one damage to the vast majority of of those those monsters. I think Carnifexes can still have them, um, but beyond that, you know, you're not going to see Drukari thick city anymore you know you you have death guard and based on the uh, the armies that were submitted it looks like there's only two death guard opponents in the entire tournament so watch you draw both yeah, of them yeah that's what happened hopefully not because that would suck <laughs> blade guard veterans would be would exactly suck. the reason why we made the sword brethren video right that would be that matchup yep. Yep. So they're would. they're there to, to take my flank objectives, kind of follow up behind the incursors and do the damage and continue on advancing across the board or the middle of the board to really kind of consolidate my wins. So Redemptor Dreadnoughts, I think they really don't really need any other introduction. They speak for themselves. Hellbrook will be with those guys providing the, the re-rolls of ones. Um, obviously there's a couple of opponents out there now, Sisters of Battle. I forget the order that can prevent rerolls to wound. So I may or may not be able to... Sally's. You know, Sally's are there. I think there was one Sally player <laughs> in the tournament. Um, so I'll use that depending on the player that we were doing that. But overall, they give you some nice plasma range that are going to be legitimate. They're going to be going right down that center. It's it's just dangerous, you know. You don't want to come anywhere close to them. And Hellbrook's there, so they'll be able to consolidate that that center pretty well. And then Vanguard Veteran, you know, we have a, a a few people in our Discord and in general that I've seen on Facebook that are having difficulties playing with Vanguard Veterans. Mine are tooled up 100% with the Lightning Claws and Storm Shields, so they're durable. Uh, but they're not going to get armor of content, obviously, because of the storm shields. But the sergeant is also the champion of the feast, and he's rocking the skull of Keiko Dominance. So I am taking that for uh, obvious reasons that uh, especially uh, you're going to see some more Zerker armies out there. There's a ton of Grey Knight players, and there's quite a few. It's stupid good. Uh, thousand suns it's in so this good. tournament so 
Yeah. Even before I knew that, I knew that was a possibility. I was going to see some Zerkers. And even, you know, the Tyranid Mortal Wound spam, you know, helps against something like that. You know, being able yep. to pop that yep. in a, a timely manner. And these kind of just are my toolkit. They go wherever you need them. Chaplin will be following along with them, hopefully as best as he can, depending on the terrain, you know, because he is a biker, can't go through the ruins. Uh, but potentially mortal wounds on those guys, be able to kill something necessary. There is one Knights player that is in, in the tournament, and they are allowing the data slate for the, the OPSEC on it. So that could be a pairing that I have to worry about on some of these. Uh, but the Vanguard veterans do put out a ton of wounds in close combat. They With the mortal wounds, they should be able to do some damage and hopefully take them out as necessary. All right, and then we have a four-man Eradicator squad. Uh, it's four-man because I had the exact amount of points necessary to buy another one. And getting yep. another melt in the unit is... Yeah, why not, right? Never going to hurt. So I'm not... Especially a heavy yep. melta. Never going to hurt. It's extra durability. You got to have melt in the list. So, I, you know, a lot of players take five or six, you know, to be able to split them. I just couldn't fit them in the point. In, in that and being comfortable with the amount of units that I wanted to take in the squad. Cause typically when you're at like 10 units, 11 units, it makes me a little bit nervous. I don't, if you lose a unit, then it's a lot harder for you to play the objective game. Right. Yep. So yep. I also t- take, excuse me, <clears throat> talk a lot. And then your throat gets all tickly, uh, two land speeder storms. So these are, Kind of a toolkit for my list. So Armor Contempt obviously helps them. They would be better in Uphold, because then they would get the invulnerable save, but Armor Contempt will activate them. They do have Incidental Firepower, and I wanted something that could clear off Chaff against uh, an enemy if necessary. Uh, So, you know, if they got a unit of 10 Gaunts, they could potentially, between the two of them, kill the Gaunts. Uh, with some pistol fire from units if I needed to charge something that was behind that. Or, because they're a vehicle, and a relatively durable vehicle at that, they can take, if I needed to go engage, instead of something like Stranglehold, I could do that. Um, They could play the engage. Or, if I needed to do rod, I don't typically do rod or R&D now, but they could also do that. Uh, Or, I'm sorry, they can't activate the, the points, but um, it just gives me more units to, to play around with the board so I can get another infantry unit in those quarters to be able to do those if necessary. But then they also can flank. Also, importantly, they have uh, the access to the shock and yep, strategy. I was just going to get to that. So they have outflank, which is, which is very good, which allows me to hold them off the board if I need to. And if there's a stubborn unit that's kind of on the other side of the board that is kind of tearing me up a little bit. Uh, you pull them on the board on a flank because they have fly, but they'll just go right over them. Uh, so yeah. it's pretty difficult to screen out a flying out flank unit. Um, but then they pop the shock and awe and get that no or minus one to shoot and also no uh, overwatch. So some. Yep. So. That's the list. Kind of the the plan that I, I'm envisioning in my mind is the incursors and the infiltrators kind of deploy up, depending on the army. If I see that there is uh, a lot of deep striking or things that could play around with that that game, so to speak, and the units I'll hold the infiltrators back a little bit to help screen out that back line, so I don't have to worry about that. But ideally, they get to their objectives, hold on to that, consolidate that, get them out of line of sight so that they can get me some points right away. I want to make sure that I'm getting my objectives right away. As I talked about, I want to get those, pad those points. If they die after that point, that's you know obviously not good, but at that point, they've, they've earned their points. Right, I'm getting the points in the game. And not ideal to, to lose them, but really they're objective sitters. That's all they're going to do. I'm not going to really use them to assault something unless I absolutely have to or need their 
obviously they have bolt guns, so like they'll shoot at stuff. But I'm not going to go and throw them into combat unless I need to. You know, they're they need those points, so that's the whole point. Yeah, think about that. So players that are list building and they're like, ah, oh, they don't kill things or whatever. They're not, they're not in the things. list for that. So troops. Troops in general aren't supposed to kill things. The only troops unit that I'm really going to expect to kill things is going to be a Crusader squad. And that's because they put out a metric ton of attacks. Yep. And you can do things like Gene Rot Might and you equip them with Power Fists if you need to. Those are the only troops units that I'm really expecting to do real damage. Incursors, even five man assault intercessors, uh, infiltrators, they're, any damage they do. It's like uh, it's like in the old days when like rhinos and drop pods were really common. It's like, oh, I'm, I, I'll roll the storm bolter. Here we go. Oh, hey, look at that! I did a wound. Oh, you failed the save. <laughs> yep. It's just you know, hey, I got a wound through. Cool. Like, okay, you don't expect them to do anything. And I mean, incursors are nice. They ignore ballistic skill modifiers, but. And it's it's not super yep. useful. Um, the other thing with the so, incursions um, that, and the reason why I take Phobos uh, with my troops right now, and at least in this list, is they also have access to guerrilla tactics. So, if I need to capture something, that they're obsec, right? So, if I want to, I can get them to my opponent's objectives. If they're if I've got mine locked up with blade guard veterans or redemptors or whatnot, even my land speeder storms or whatever it is, I can get to another point in the board and capture them if I need to. So, yeah, that's there. Yeah. So um, I think uh, this is certainly an interesting list. Um, Helbrecht, uh, Helbrecht is just great. Um, you know, he's going to be a great buff for. Uh, your Redemptors and or your Melta uh, Eradicators. Um, he can even run around with a Blade Guard unit um, if need be uh, and buff them uh, and just be additional uh, pain there. Um, the Primaris Chaplain on a Bike, I think, is the, the better choice for a Chaplain in this. Yes, he's more expensive than Grimaldus, um, but uh, even... You know, you mentioned you don't want to give up secondaries if you can. Um, uh, Grimaldus obviously gives up 12 to 13 victory points, depending on, you know, whether he's Warlord or not, if you, if your opponent takes Assassinate. But uh, honestly, I, I love Grimaldus, and I don't. that's not a stopping point for me running him. But he doesn't yeah. really fit in this list, yeah. to be perfectly honest. Um, Grimaldus is best when you're running big blocks of units. So big, like 10 man sword, brethren, 10 man to 15 man or 14 man, uh, crusader squads, or even a big blob of crusader squads. Um, that's where he's going to thrive the best because you're going to get the advance buff to move those big blobs forward, uh, to get into position. Um, you know, he's going to pass out feel no pain to multiple units, um, you know, yep. those kind of things. So in those circumstances, that's where you really want to run Grimaldus. In this, uh, you know, really the buffs that we want him to give out are going to probably be to the yep. Vanguard vets, and they're going to outpace him easily. So that's why I like the Chaplain on the bike here in this instant. Plus yep. it's a badass yep. model, right? So, um, you know, incursors are an interesting choice, but it makes sense for what you're trying to accomplish with this list. Um, I've never not liked incursors. I've always thought they were pretty cool. Um, I was kind of sad when they, you know, sort of took a nosedive as far as their usability in ninth. Um, so, um, but I'm glad it's, you know, to see that you're going to take them to a tournament and see how they do. So, um, so yeah, infiltrators, we've always touted yep. infiltrators as being great in ninth edition. Um, not surprised to see them in this list. Um, blade guard, uh, you know, are a, a great unit people. They, they did lose a little bit of their luster with armor of contempt, um, which, you know, sword brethren gain, uh, in that respect. And, um, you know, uh, obviously you didn't have time to, 
paint up and build tents or brethren for this list. Um, but uh, I think that um, the blade guard work well in this list. They serve double duty, sort of as like a good luck trying to shift yep. this unit off of this point. And you know, yeah, come come on and charge me. Like they're good in melee too. Um, you know, so they work well for that. Um, of course, redemptors, yep. they're a staple of our list. Um, not much more to say there. Uh, Vanguard vets, I know a lot of folks are talking about, oh, rip the storm shields off my Vanguard vets. I'm going to run double claws instead. You know, I, I'm i not sold on doing that. I think they're still a really squishy unit. Everyone knows how dangerous they are. They're fast. They're deadly. Um, especially with us, yep. with remorseless persecution, they're really scary. Uh, I think they need that 4++. plus plus. I really do. Uh, and, you know, yes, they don't benefit from Armor of Contempt, but the Storm Shield yep. sort of gives it to them anyway, and they anything that's AP0, they're going to get a 2-plus on, which is important because they're only two wound Marines, right? So um, I still think that they benefit from the Storm Shield. If you were going to run like a 5-man Deep Strike It or something, uh, Double Claws on all five you know, is a fairly cheap option. Yep. Sure. Go for it. Right. Um, but in this, you know, if I'm going to run a block of them, uh, I think I want, still want storm shields on all of them. Um, air ads, uh, you know, heavy melta, uh, great squads can be another, uh, you know, thick target for somebody to worry about, you know, on top of the blade guard, on top of the redemptors, on top of the, Vanguard vets, you know, uh, and then the land seeders, speeder storms. I've I've always given Bob some grief about this unit because I'm it's like a, you're you're taking a what a land speeder what, but um, it's uh, you know I think they're cheap and they benefit from, from armor of contempt, which is awesome, and they. Um, they have a use, right? You know, are they going to put out a lot of firepower? No, um, but they're cheap and they have access to uh, shock and awe strat, which is really good. We are now in a meta where fights first, fights last, like everybody has something that can cause one or the other. And being able to force that, you know, on our opponents, um, really good. So, um, Overall, uh, a really uh, solid-looking list. I'm looking forward to hearing how it does. Uh, cross you know, fingers tomorrow. I don't get Death Guard the first and round. And Sunday. <laughs> cross fingers you don't get Death Guard. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, so that's the list. Uh, tell us what you think about uh, Bob's list for this. Um, stay tuned for live streams. Uh, get those. Make sure you click that uh, bell icon to get notified on all of our uh, events. That'll notify you as soon as we go live um, this weekend. So uh, hopefully uh, you guys enjoy this video. Um, let us know what you think down in the comments. Uh, please join us on our Discord. We have a ton of great uh, content. We'll be talking about uh, Bob's. I'm sure he'll be commenting, you know, mid-game, after-game on Discord as well. So check us out there. Um, we also have a Patreon if you guys want to support us. Uh, you know, we can't do this without our Patreons. We uh, appreciate you guys so much. Um, so check us out there. And... Uh, We'll see you tomorrow, which is probably going to be today for most of you. So keep on crusading.